going, Larry? I don't know. Had some fun. Well, come on up to the house with me and meet the missus. Oh, she's all right. She's a good sport. Come on. Okay, why not? <laughs> well, this is a little blue heaven. Now we eat. Sit down there a minute. haven't missed one in years. Yoo-hoo! Mama! Baby's home! Cookie! Ah! Oh, gee, I missed you. Oh, I almost forgot, honey. I want you to meet an old pal of mine, Larry. Larry White. Hi, Larry. I don't know. What do you think? Ooh, a smart cracker from the salty seas, eh? <laughs> A salty cracker. <laughs> uh, say, speaking about crackers, how about something to eat? How would you like a bowl of chicken noodle soup, a nice big thick T-bone steak, some french fried potatoes, an asparagus salad, and a nice big cup of coffee? Yeah. What, no pie? Oh, sure. Apple, peach, raspberry, huckleberry. Where is it? At the restaurant. <laughs> I'll get dressed. We'll get down and eat. <laughs> Oh, she can cook if she wants to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. What? If we're going out to eat, I could use a partner. Oh, I just happened to think. Mabel's got a girlfriend that works down at the beach. What does she do? Teach school? No, she handles the ivories. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Blonde <laughs> or brunette? A redhead. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, she is a fip, too. Uh -huh. Say, I knew her. Come on, Charlie, you look. Don't speculate, you can't accumulate. Fast game on the pier. Win, you have your choice of anything behind the counter. Come on, boys, now, try your luck. When you took the baby down. See what you win, a prize every time. Hey, baby, it's one There she is. What do you think of her? Okay, she's all right. All right, she's perfect. Come on, now. All right, come on, let her show what you win. You win, you take a pick Oh, hello, Mabel. Hello, Millie. Look what I bring you. It's a friend of cookies and a sailor. That's two points against me right off the bat. <laughs> hey, what do you mean? This is Millie. This is Mary White. Hiya. Pretty good. How are you? Want to try your luck? Better lay off me. I'm lucky. Sure you are. You just met me. Point. Aces. Always aces. That takes into both of us. Hey, Larry, me and Mabel is going over and get a hot dog. I'm still hungry. What? After three pieces of gooseberry pie? Sure, a guy as big as me has got to have some nourishment. Well, come on. See you later, Larry. Yeah. Four. You are lucky. Keep that up and you're bound to win. Yeah, if I do, what do I get? Anything behind the counter. Whether it's got red hair or not? What did you say your point was? Aces. Still aces. Six. 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 How about another little kiss? You like them, don't you, now? Sure, I like them. They do something to you. That's not such a new line. Ain't you wealthy? Don't your old man own a lot of Rolls Royces and things? Aren't you in the Navy just for the fun of it? No. None of those things. I just like you. There's no percentage in it for you. Well, you're original anyhow. What do you suppose your kisses do to me? Nothing. You're too hard boiled. You're wrong, sailor. They do plenty to me. 
That's why I'm afraid. Afraid? Sure. You don't usually get a kick out of the fellas you meet on the pier. I'm different, huh? Sure. And I found out that if a guy can get under your skin, he usually makes a sucker out of you. Give us another kiss, will you? You happy, kid? You bet. You almost gummed up the ceremony, huh? What do you mean? Why, when the preacher said, do you take this woman for your lawful wife? What'd you say? What did I say? You said, aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Want a bite, baby? Oh, Cookie, ain't you had enough? Don't they feed you guys anything in the Navy? Sure they do. And it's ready and waiting. You don't have to go to no restaurants. <laughs> oh, love, honor, and oh, baby. Yeah, I stumbled over that one, too. That's what you get for marrying a sailor. Oh, yeah? You was plenty glad to marry a sailor. That job you had in the laundry was getting on your nerves. Well, this is getting on my nerves now. He's home about one night a week, and the rest of the nights are plenty cold. One night a week? Oh, Larry. Yeah, I guess that's about it. Yeah, and he don't need to, neither. What do you mean, I don't need to? Well, you'll be out in about three days, and you're just going to ship over again because Larry's going to stick to the Navy. Are you going to stick to the Navy, Larry? Well, I was. Till I met you. You going to get out of it now? Sure. Say, Larry, if you don't ship over, I won't. I got a great idea. I can get a job down on that fishing boat at Fish Harbor. Hey, do you suppose I could get one there, too? Why, sure you can. They're crazy for sailors. It's a cinch. Oh, gee, Larry, that's well. Uh, ain't love grand? What do you know about it? Where's the young married couple gonna flop tonight? I'm gonna fix up the spare bedroom for them. You'll have to come through our bedroom to get to the bathroom. But don't mind us. Looks like the White Star coming in. Yeah, she's back ahead of time. She's been off the coast of Mexico. Probably got a load of skipjack and tuna. The young man, Lonnie White, the navigator of the White Star, is waiting outside. Well, have him come right in. How are you, White? Mr. Granger? Want to see me? Yes, bring up the chair. Sit down, I want to talk to you a minute. Would you have a good trip, White? Yes, sir. Nice run of skipjack and a few tuna. Fine. Uh, we're transferring Captain Meglin uh, out of the White Star. A darn fine skipper, sir. Oh, yes. We're giving him a new boat. Uh, White, I've been watching your work for a year. 
How'd you like to go out in command of the White Star? You mean I'd be skipper? Yes. You have your papers, haven't you? Yes, sir. Fine. Uh, of course, the job will carry with it a raise in salary of $50 a month. Thank you, Mr. Granger. No. Quite all right, White. I'm glad to do it. Have a cigar? Oh. Sure is swell looking. Your daughter? My daughter? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, just a young lady that I happen to be interested in at the present time. I'm sorry, I... I didn't know. Well, I guess you're the only one that doesn't. Help yourself. Thanks. Well, I guess I better be running along tell the wife about the good news. Fine. She, she'll be pickled tink. So, take a... <laughs> sure be glad to hear it. Good enough. Thanks again, Mr. Granger. <laughs> oh, that's quite all right, Captain. There you are. Thank you, Mr. White. Captain White. The same to you? My name is Bainbrick. Ethel Bainbrick. Oh, yeah. I've just been drinking in an eye full of your picture up in Mr. Granger's office. Oh, so he's been showing off his treasures again. Yeah. Well, see you in swimming. That'll be a break for me. Snap out of it, buddy, and snap fast. It wouldn't be hard to take. Oh, no? Do you still want to work for Granger? Oh, boy, have I got news. I'm the new skipper of the White Star. What? The big boss gives you a boost, and then you start right out on the make for his name. Oh, don't get that way. You gotta admit she's just as trim as any ship of the line. Kid wise. Them dames is dynamite. So you're a captain. Well, guess we ought to get drunk and celebrate. No, nothing doing. We're going right home and tell Millie the good news. You certainly get around. A minute ago, you were stuck on that dame. Say, was your mother ever frightened by a bicycle? Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a great welcome. Yeah. How about a little drink? It's an idea. I'm with you. Maybe she had a bad cold while you were away. There. Well, hello, Cookie. Hello, Millie. Hello, Millie. Hello, Larry. Hey, that's a swell hello to a guy that's been away to sea for ten days. Well, I guess I'll shove off. Hey, Cookie. Yeah? About coming over to the house tonight for supper. I guess that's all. Well, that's all right, Larry. I'll see you later. You sure can take the wind out of a guy's sails. Here I come home loaded with good news and happy as a kid with a new top. What is the good news? When I pulled up to the dock this afternoon, the big boss sent for me. I went up to his office, guess what he said? 
He congratulated you on another record-breaking haul of fish, I suppose. Fish. Oh, Larry, how I hate fish. This whole place smells of fish. Every time I hear the word, I want to scream. Hey! Don't get so high and mighty. Fish buy everything we got. Yes, and what have we got? This little cracker box for an apartment. Me wearing last summer's clothes. You haven't bought a suit since we've been married. Now what's the good news? Well, I'm skipper of the ship. And? And what? Well, don't you get something extra for us? Sure I do. Fifty smackers a month. I guess that bowls you over, don't it? Fifty bucks a month. Oh, Larry, why don't you try to make some real money? You're going to start that again, are you? But, Larry, what is 50 bucks a month? A lot of fellas make that in one night. Yeah. Some night the Coast Guard's going to catch them dumping that booze and fill them full of lead. Oh, don't be so dumb, Larry. Everybody's doing it. And now with you in command of a boat, it's a cinch. They don't bother fishing boats anyway. And you could make a clean-up. You're not going to make a crook out of me. You or nobody else. You can all pay me 15 more. You're a lucky step. Say, let me see your pill. Sure. There it is. You ought to shame to take the dough. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, is any other game you guys know? You think you can make it, buddy? Hey, down at the Hey, Cookie. Yeah? Come on, I want to talk to you. Sure. I'm all through, fellas. Hey, what do you mean? You gonna quit now? Certainly. What? After winning all our dough? Five games in a row? Taking a part, Ray. You Damn cheap you. nickel snatcher. Hey, you can't call a friend of mine any names. Oh, I can't, eh? You two guys thought Dempsey was twins, and you was both of them. Letting a lot of palookas in a pool hall give you a shellacking like this. And me ruining a perfectly good beef stew so you can go down tomorrow and collect your pay. I told you how it happened. A guy insulted me. Larry stepped in and a guy clipped him on the chin. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It happened just like this. Just for that, you big palooka, you can get up in the morning and fix your own breakfast. Say, who started all this? And where did you get the snoot for your head when you came down at that pool hall? Oh, Millie and I had a battle. I walked out on her. You know the rest. I thought she'd be glad to hear the good news about the raise. She only laughed at me. Said it was chicken feed. I know how they are. Say, Larry, I know how we can make a lot of dough. Yeah? Tony Molino will give you 2,000 bucks for a cargo of booze 
Delivered behind the old machinery pier. You too. Well, why not? They're all doing it. Why take $2,000 and throw it over your shoulder? The two of us could grab the boat, slip out after it was dark, clean up the whole deal and be back before daylight. Why, it's a cinch. We can pick up some easy dough, regular. I'm gonna fool you. I'll do it. You make a deal with Tony and we'll pull it tomorrow night. Gee, that's great. Say, do you wanna flop here tonight? Well, I don't feel much like going home. Well, stay here. You can sleep in the spare room. We'll both sleep in the spare room. Is that all of it, Cookie? Yeah. All right, get ready to shove off. Good work. That's your two grand. See you later. They got away. Yeah, it looks like a fishing boat to me. I'm sure it is. Are you sure it's uh, Tony Molino's gang? Certainly. But well, that's the first time they ever used the old machinery wharf. And they got away clean, eh? Yeah, they had a lookout posted. Well, they spotted us as soon as we drove up. They made a break with their truck and shot their way out. Well, what boat landed the stuff? A fishing boat. Fishing boat, eh? Yeah. That's a new racket. I'm sure that was one of the Yamato boats. Yamato line, eh? R uh, Granger runs that outfit, don't he? Yeah, but you don't think Granger's mixed up in the booze racket, do you, Chief? <clears throat> no. But someone working for him might be. I'll have a talk with Granger in the morning. Anything more tonight? Yes. Take a run out to Fish Harbor and get a line on what boats were out tonight. Okay, Chief. Come on, boys. Where have you been? Getting that. I hope you're satisfied. Oh, Larry, you did it. Yeah, I did it. How much is this? It's over a thousand bucks. Oh, gee, Larry, that's great. Come here, sit down and tell me all about it. Well, we just got away in time. I don't know whether it was hijackers or federal agents. I bet it was exciting. Yeah, it was exciting. Larry, listen. Isn't it going to be grand, honey? We can move in a nice apartment now, and I can have a lot of new clothes. We can meet the people we want to know. And I can live the way I want to live. Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, gee, honey. I'm awful happy. Oh, 
hello. Is Captain White on the boat? Larry? Sure. Uh, Larry! No! Someone here wants to see you. Be right there. Hello, Miss Bambrick. How are you, Captain? Very well, thank you. Admiral. Like to come aboard for a little tour of inspection? No. Your boat smells too fishy. <laughs> well, it ought to. It's full of fish half the time. But not all the time. I thought it might smell a little rummy. Why, uh, what do you mean? Now, White, don't lend mince words. I know what you've been doing with that boat. That means uh, Granger knows, too. Yes. That means I'm through. You might have known you couldn't get away with a thing like that on one of those boats. What you need is a speedboat. Yeah. <laughs> Granger hasn't got any speedboats. But I know where I can get one. Meaning what? If you want to continue on with this racket, I'll finance you. Are you on the level? Sure I am. Come up to my apartment and we'll talk things over. Okay, that's a go. Say, Millie, have you been down to the new Beedle Club? No, Larry hasn't had time to take me yet. I was down there last week. There you are, dear. Keep it strong enough. Hey, Millie, pick the new scenery. How do I look? Cookie, you look immense. Huh? I mean, swell. Yeah. Hey, have you had yet? <laughs> no, not yet. That's great. Oh, gee, this is great. But, but where's Larry? Oh. He just went down to tell us after his tuxedo. He hasn't gotten back yet, huh? Hey, Pipes, uh, cookie in the soup and fish. <laughs> well, I'm in a fishy business. <laughs> well, sure is some swell shoot. Shoot? <laughs> so what are they serving around here? Look at him. Ever since he got that monkey suit, he's been showing himself off. The dumb cluck. How do I look? Great. I saw him think's window for sixty-nine fifty. I'm holding out on Cookie. He thinks it cost a hundred and a half. How about that drink? Right over here. Thanks. <laughs> Life. Mm. Hey, there you are. Thank you. Here's Tom. <laughs> what, what's the matter with it? Larry said it came right from Canada. Well, if it did, they must have deported it. Thanks. Here's to us. Sure, why not? I never knew the stuff I brought in tasted so good. That's the way with life. The clever people fight for champagne. The dumb ones are contented with beer. I guess it's the same way with women, too, ain't it? Everything worthwhile is worth fighting for. And I live with that. Oh, it's four o'clock. I'm going home. Now oh, I gotta get ready to crank that Mack truck. Hey, Slut. Leviathan. Oh, wait a little while. Let him sleep. Let him sleep? What about me? I'm dead on my feet. Cookie, wake up. Lunch. Huh? Come on, we're going home. 
Oh, I gotta wait for Larry. Oh, no, you ain't. We're going home. Oh, he'll be home pretty soon. I know he will. If a husband ain't home by four in the morning, he ain't coming home till after breakfast. Come on, Zep. Slip in your hanger. All right. Don't rush me. Well, don't hurry me. Well, Millie was sure at a swell time. I'm sorry you can't stay. Well, Larry, we've been waiting for you. What's this, a reception committee? Oh, no, we had a swell party. It's too bad you weren't here. Yeah. It's too bad. Come on. Good night, Millie. Good night, Mabel. Good night, Millie. Good night, Cookie. So long, Larry. Where have you been, Larry? What difference does it make where I've been? You told me a long time ago that it didn't make any difference what I did. Just so long as I brought in the money. Well, I'm bringing it in. But what about our guests? Do you think it's very nice to throw a party and then never show up yourself? Ah, that gang. They didn't even miss me. All they're interested in is whether I put out enough liquor or not. Looks like I provided plenty. I'm in that business, you know. I didn't know you felt that way about Cookie. Well, I don't feel that way about Cookie. He understands. I think I understand, too. Well, that's great. And from now on, there won't be any arguments. Good night. showing up. You haven't been around for three weeks. Oh, gosh, I've been busy. I got something to show you. Look what Papa gave Mama. Ain't that a hunk of ice? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, but that ain't all. Come on, I'll tell you all about it. Well, tell me all about it. How's Cookie? Fine. Guess what he wants to do. What? Adopt a baby. Are you going to? Maybe. I think it'd be sort of fun buying things for a kid. But imagine me with a baby. Wouldn't I be a scream? <laughs> Gee, all this money's made you awfully happy, hasn't it? Oh, I'll say it has. Ain't you happy? Do I look happy? Oh, I know. It's Larry, ain't it? Where is he? Where he always is. Miss Ethel Bainbrook. His business partner. Well, maybe they have to talk things over. Oh, you know as well as I do. They're not fooling me a bit. Well, what do you care? Did it ever occur to you that I... I might be stuck on Larry? That he's my husband and I want him? Well, you should worry as long as you have everything you want. Everything I want. What would you do if it was Cookie? Well, I'd like to catch the big mug. They'd take him home on a meat wagon. <laughs> Let's forget about it. All right. What are you going to do tomorrow? Nothing. Let's go shopping for a baby. All right. I'm going to get me a nice big fat one. It looks like Cookie. If they come that funny looking. <laughs>
Hello, Larry. Hello, Joe. Have any trouble getting through? Plenty. All right. Unload it, boys. In just a minute. Before you do, give. Wisen up, huh? And 500. What is this, a hold-up? I don't know. What do you think? You couldn't get anybody else to take a chance, could you? All right. Okay, Cookie. Let him have it. Sorry, Mr. White. Something wrong with your arm? No, I... I just got vaccinated. I see. Now, I get this, Clark. And get us straight. Double with your squad is that you're all, you always get there just a little too late. Yeah, but we got the truck and the booze, didn't we? Yes, but I want Larry White, the guy who runs it in. Well, that ought to be easy. He was wounded when he got away. I'll try the hospitals. He's too smart for that. Get a line on his wife. Watch her. Go around the places where he hangs out. Who had a dragnet? And comb this town clean. I want that man to want him now. Yes, but she... No I... buts about it. Now get going. And you better bring him in, too. All right. with Cookie. They were running in some stuff tonight. Somebody tipped off the federal agent. Cookie got away with the boat. But Larry was wounded. Well, well, where is he? Well, we don't know. Cookie phoned all the hospitals, but he can't locate him. And he didn't come home. He's with her. That's where he is. He's with her. What are you going to do? I'm going to settle this thing once and for all. Listen, you can't do that. Can't I? 
Well, I'm going to. Mary! Mabel, you keep out of this. This is my affair. Come in. You're late. You kept me waiting. I think it's worth waiting for, Mr. Granger. Well, what did you find out? You shadowed Miss Bainbrick 24 hours a day for the past week. You're right. There is a man. Who is he? What's his name? His name is Larry White. He used to work for you, I believe. Larry White? That's him. And if you're interested, he's up in her apartment right now. He's up there now? Yep. Just had a phone call from one of our men who's in an apartment across the court. That's all. Thanks. I'll mail you a check in the morning. That's perfectly all right, Mr. Granger. And the other little job? I'm pleased to serve you. All right. Larry White. Gladstone, one eight six five. Bainbrick's apartment right here, miss. Thanks. I don't think it's smart to call a doctor tonight, but if your temperature is up in the morning, we'll have one hot or cold. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Of course, you're all right. Help me on with this, will you? You think you'd better? Sure. Well, this finishes things. I don't want you to try this again. You're going to give up the racket. I can't quit it now. What do you mean, you can't give it up? Oh, I gotta go on now. Millie's used to money. She'd leave me in a minute. What do you care? I've only seen her once and then at a distance. What you can see in that selfish, empty-headed little fool is beyond me. This is going to be an awful surprise to you, Ethel. But you see, I'm really in love with Millie. It isn't a surprise. I've always suspected it. The only reason I ever went into this was because she wanted me to. You see, Millie wants money and ease and clothes. And you're going to keep on giving them to her? I suppose so. I've always 
hoped that something would happen that would bring us both to our senses. Maybe this is it. Just popping into bed, eh? Well? I was just about to retire when Mr. White dropped in for a moment. <laughs> Sorry, Ethel. That won't wash. I know better. Well, what do you mean? What? I told you once there was one thing I valued more than anything in this world. I valued it because I was never entirely sure that I owned it. You robbed me of it. Now I'm going to kill you just as I would expect you to kill me if I had robbed you of the thing you valued the most. Jim, this is all a terrible mistake. Come on, Larry. I'm ready. Oh, I beg your pardon, Ethel. This is Mr. Granger, dear. It's my wife, Mr. Granger. Oh. Uh, uh, how do you do? How do you do? Ethel has spoken of you so often, I've always thought that I knew you. Uh, yes, uh, sure. Are you ready, dear? We only dropped in for a moment. Goodbye, Ethel. I'll ring you in the morning. Maybe we can shop and have lunch. Yes, of course. Good night, Mr. Granger. Good night. Come along, dear. I'm sorry, Ethel. I can't tell you how sorry I am. It's all right, Jim. We all make mistakes sometimes. You're hurt. That's me a scratch. Hey, how'd you know I was here? Mabel told me what happened. And when you didn't come home, I, I guessed where you were. And I suppose I ought to thank you for keeping Granger from making a target out of me. No, Larry. You haven't anything to thank me for. Then why did you lie to Granger about the reason I was here? Because I'm to blame for the mess you're in. Yeah? Yes, Larry. Oh, I've been a selfish little fool. I only thought I wanted pretty clothes and, and soft living. I never knew real happiness when I had it. I know now that the, the only thing I ever really wanted was you. Well, that's a mighty pretty speech, but it's too late. A lot of people want me now. And the cops will grab me before I get a chance to beat it out of this town. But you're not going to beat it, Larry. What do you mean, I'm not? You're going to give yourself up. Now, tonight. Plead guilty. It won't go so hard for you. Oh, I suppose you think that a stretch in the pen would be easy. Oh, but you can't get away from them. Besides, it's your only chance for a clean start. And it's my only chance to make up for all the grief I've caused you. You will, won't you, Larry? Say you will. Going down, Mr. White? No. I guess I'm going up. This car is registered the name of the Reverend John A. Antwistle. Yeah, I know. That's White's car, all right. He'll be down in a minute. That's what I call service. Are you ready to go with it? Sure. Millie, you better go over and stay with Mabel tonight. You'll hear from me in the morning. All right, Larry. Come on.
People versus Larry White. The defendant will approach the bar for sentence. Have you any legal cause to show why a sentence should not be pronounced? None, Your Honor. The charge of which the defendant stands guilty is one which the court does not treat lightly. In fact, this court has never in the past shown leniency on this charge. However, the facts set forth in the probation officer's report, the defendant's past good behavior, and his former employer's belief in him, and his service to his country, outweighs the precedence of this court. A probationary order will be made. The defendant is sentenced to one year of penal servitude, which sentence is suspended for the period of two years. The defendant will during that time keep himself in the jurisdiction of the court, strictly obey all laws, and will report monthly in person to the probationer. Bail is exonerated. Yeah. Then let me offer the suspended sentence. I'm on probation. Oh, I've, I've prayed all morning long. I guess it's the first time I've prayed since I used to say, now I lay me down to sleep when I was a kid. I guess your prayers were answered all right. Granger dropped in out of nowhere, testified to my good character. That helped. That and my Navy record, that didn't do any hurt. Oh, gee, Larry. I'm so happy I... I feel sort of giddy. Huh. Oh, Larry. Granger said he'd give me my job back again. Gee, Larry, that's swell. Gonna be different now. No more big dough, just plugging along. No, oh, I don't care. At least it's, it's honest and it's clean. Fish business clean? <laughs> oh, Larry, I won't ever complain again. You did the trick. You made a hit with Granger. I don't want to make a hit with Granger. I only want to make a hit with you. Now and forever. You love me, don't you? You bet I do. I'm different, huh? Give us another kiss, will you, babe? <laughs> 